It is the most wonderful time of the year. No, not Christmas, but Citadel Day, where all the greatest racers descend on the Citadel of Namur to find out who gets to finish second behind Mathieu van der Poel. In all honesty though, Namur is an incredible racetrack and quite rightly is named as the greatest cyclocross racetrack in the world by quite a lot of people, including myself. But what makes Namur so good? Today, I thought I'd take a deep dive into what exactly makes this place so special. So Namur made its debut not too long ago actually. In 2009, the first edition was held as part of the GVA Trophée on a raceway clearly inspired by the former motocross circuit at this location. This first edition saw Niels Albert and Daphne van der Brandt come out victorious. Throughout the next decade, the course joined the World Cup and has grown out to arguably the competition's most popular race. Namur has pretty substantial changes to it most years, course designer Erwin Verveke always looking for ways to improve the racing. The original 2009 layout relied on the height difference to create large drops and steep running sections, elements of which still make Namur to this day. These familiar features were combined with a staircase that is no longer part of the course. By 2010, the start had moved to where we still know it today on the Route Marvailleuse, and the course had gained its first similarities with what we know today. The starting climb was introduced, and so was the infamous off camber section. Again, the up and down nature of the course was kept. In 2011, Namur moved to the World Cup for the first time, where we still know it today. The course was edited somewhat again, the staircase was removed, more steeper ascents and descents were added. The whole first half of the course was pretty much perfected this year. It is still the same to this day. By 2013, the whole course had been perfected and was essentially what we now know it. With 2017 just moving the finish location from a dangerous downhill sprint to placing it atop the Esplanade, where it is still to this day. The final changes have come in the most recent two editions. 2019 saw the descent towards the off camber section get reworked becoming incredibly technical and adding a long, difficult, cobbled climb to the course too. Due to complaints of these changes being too dangerous and too difficult, and arguably they were, the descent was again modified for 2020, creating a slower, safer descent and cutting the cobbled sector roughly in half. All things point to the 2021 layout being the same as last year. This would mean that this year, once again, the race will start in its traditional place on the main road slightly uphill. They'll dive over that little lip that every year I'm terrified will cause a massive accident before they'll start the long, thin trailing climb all the way to the top of the citadel for the first time. Then they'll go down the familiar shorter descent. They will then cross the esplanade with both the finish line and the first pit lane. And from then on it's over the flyover and the long technical descent starts all the way down to the cobblestones. Rounding all the way back up the cobblestones, we then get the off camber, some more climbing, and finally that massive wall that must be scaled by foot. Then the second pits, and then we turn right back onto the start line once more. So what makes Namur that well loved, and how has Namur kept its character despite constantly changing? The simple answer is that Namur is hard. It's incredibly hard but hard in a way that wasn't the same as many other courses. When Namur joined the cyclocross calendar, it was at a time where a big chunk of the calendar was filled by power crosses in muddy fields. Courses like Roubaix, Essen, Hoogstraat, Hammer, Antwerp and Kalmthout dominated the calendar. These races were physically demanding due to them often being in very muddy conditions or requiring constant short, sharp efforts. But whilst they were technically challenging, they were still fairly doable. Even the more technical courses on the calendar, places like Overijse and the Koppenberg, were during this time much more flowing, requiring a very different technique than what Namur would. Namur, to an extent, looks like a mountain bike course. It's the nickname the course has gained throughout the years for a reason, after all. And when it made its debut, there really was nothing quite like it. Starting through the forest, the steep dead drops are unique to the calendar still, to the same degree the ruts and the tree roots that must be manoeuvred are now found in other places too. But it was Namur that made them cool, it was Namur that introduced them. Notice how Namur also doesn't have any grass on the course, anywhere, and compare that to all its contemporaries from the time. Back then even Baal was in a field. 
Throughout the years, course designer Aaron Verfecker has constantly sought to improve the course by adding more and more technical passages to the circuit, constantly testing riders' ability. The off-camber section that used to be Namur's marquee feature was again one of the most beloved bits of racetrack for years after its introduction, holding status almost as a similar challenge to the curl. Only the fact that the rest of the Namur circuit is now equally tough and the fact that years of racing has literally dug a racing line into this section means that the off-camber no longer is quite as valuable as it used to be. Namur is also a true course, it doesn't lie. If you're the best here, then you will win. You can't rely on tactically beating your rival. Everybody is forced to throw everything out there. And this lends itself to incredible racing and some pretty surprising results. Namur is home to a remarkable amount of stories, considering the fact that it's only a decade or so old. Francis Mouret became the last Frenchman to win a World Cup race in 2013, doing so here in Namur. We've seen Mathieu van der Poel perform works of art here during his peak battles with Wout van Aert. Namur didn't lie when it showed as a young Evie Richards explode onto the scene, winning a first World Cup against vastly more experienced opposition in 2017. In 2019, we missed the legendary battle between van der Poel and Tonart, whilst during the women's race, some kid called Clara Honsinger rode a top 10 for the first time on Belgian soil. And just last year we got the three-way face-off between Van der Poel, Van Aert and Pidcock in a way that we haven't really seen before or since. We also saw Hansinger prove that that top 10 was no fluke and establish herself truly as the heir of Compton. And of course with the fifth place at Namur last year, we also got arguably the breakout performance of Blanca Vache. Namur doesn't lie. Namur is where, where talent emerges, it's where gods battle out on the twistiest, most technical bit of racetrack that Belgium has to offer. This year's Citadel Cross is held on the 19th of December, from the day of release for this video, next Sunday. As mentioned before, the course shouldn't have changed compared to last year's layout, meaning we'll get an incredibly difficult and demanding race once again. There is a chance of rain, which it feels like there is every year around Namur, to spice things up as well. If you're watching on at home, here's a few names to look out for. Lucinda Brandt has taken three consecutive victories at Namur, so all eyes will be on the world champion. But will she need time to settle back into rhythm after her training camp? We'll see. Last year's runner-up, Clara Honsinger, will be keen to go one better. Honsinger has really levelled up this year, winning the Kuppenberg course, proving that she really is the real deal. But again, Honsinger looked to be losing sharpness in a trip back to the US to successfully defend her national title could be tiring for the American. Blanca Vash will also be making her return in Namur, bit of a theme here isn't it? Being both stupidly talented and a keen mountain biker, expect Vash to put in an over icer like performance. But again, who knows, she might need to get up to speed again. And finally I want to mention Lynn Burkier, another mountain biker, another obscene talent. Burkier has finished in the top 10 at every attempt in the World Cup this year even managing a 6th place in Overeyser, a course that is somewhat similar to Namur. She could be a real outside shout for a good performance. Other than that, keep an eye on the usual suspects, Alvarado, Betsema and Worst. Van Alf has gone well in the past here as well, Peterse could be up for a good performance too, it suits her quite well. And for a change, being as light as a packet of crisps could actually play into Anna Kay's hands. And finally, of course, we have literally the most positive human being on the planet. Apparently Magali Rochette is now a podium regular, so expect her to do well. On the men's side, all eyes will be on Tom Pidcock, with no Van Aert and Van der Poel, the Olympic mountain bike champion, almost certainly should win here, and he should do quite easily. Eli Isbiet has never performed that well around here, but he'll be keen to prove that he is still the better of the two former junior rivals. Donat, on the other hand, seems to quite like Namur, so expect a strong showing from him. Other names worth looking at probably include Michael van Thurenhout, Pim Ronhaar, Conné van Kessel, and because I quite like the Fenner, Cameron Mason could do well here as well. Whatever happens, Namur is a modern day holy classic for cyclocross, and it is a holy classic for a reason. The racing is bound to be crazy, the descent sketchy, and the winner absolutely deserving.